My name is Richard Atherton. I'm 17 years old and I grew up in South Boston, Massachusetts. I was raised according to my mom's Catholic faith and attended a Catholic elementary school and regularly attended Gate of Heaven Parish where I received my first communion and St. Bridges Parish where I was baptized. I chose to continue my Catholic education by attending Severian in seventh grade, and my family has since moved to Foxborough. I was confirmed in my sophomore year at St. Mary's Parish and do what I can to maintain my faith. Being in an environment where I speak to God every day through prayer and am able to participate in experiences such as retreats, where I can learn more about faith in a more practical sense, I've come to learn more about myself and what God has called me to be. I hope this journey allows me to further explore my faith and equip me with the tools to continue seeking it beyond my time at Severian. My name is Tommy Nee. I'm 17 years old and I've lived in Norwood, Massachusetts my entire life. My family has attended St. Catherine of Siena Parish for many years and it is where I was baptized, received my first communion and first penance and was also confirmed in sophomore year. From age six to 14, I went to St. Catherine's School. It's always been important to my parents that my siblings and I go to Catholic schools to learn more about our faith. Because of its importance to my family and my regular attendance, the church has always been a part of my self-identity. Through this journey, I hope to find out what my true beliefs are, and discover how they affect my reality. So my father's Protestant and not someone who's very religious, but my mom is Christian and her and my dad, when I was born, agreed to raise me according to my mom's Catholic faith. Um, So I've attended Catholic school all throughout my life and I do my best to integrate God into my everyday life through things such as prayer. Um, And I also do my best to make it to mass at least, um, if not a few times a month um, on special holidays such as Easter and Christmas and other times of um, kind of holy times. So I would say that it largely has stuck um, from my childhood and God's always been someone I can turn to during tough times. And so growing up I was raised in a very religious Catholic household. I still go to Mass every Sunday with my family and my parents are very firm in their beliefs. They were raised in Irish and Italian Catholic families and while most of their siblings and other family members have fallen away from the church, Being united in faith is something that always brought them together and united them. And seeing this faith-based relationship had a big impact on both me and my siblings. And um, I've definitely had high and low points in my faith journey, but ultimately I really do believe that there is a creator. I believe in Jesus and I hope that there is an afterlife. I've always been a firm believer in speaking your truth and having your own interpretation of truth, no matter what the issue might be. So I find philosophy the most interesting and I often turn to it when thinking critically about issues because it doesn't have a total suspension of reality while there's also, um, it also kind of has like faith integrated into it, but in a very logical and reasonable sense so that you can still kind of defend what you think and why you think that way um, from a faithful perspective. And I personally have always been academically minded. I find my faith strongest when I'm provided with scientific facts. And for this reason, I would say that science is the form of information that convinces me of truth. I think really it comes down to um, how you back up your beliefs. So whether scientific, philosophical, or faithful, your argument is only as good as the point you use to back it up. 
Um, and I also do think there's a spectrum based on what you prioritize most. So on one end, we have people who focus on scientific realities might focus on and hyperfixate on the negative parts of the world and see everything as kind of calculated and man-made. Whereas on the other side of things, people who believe more so in the divine truth could see things through rose-colored glasses and everything being um, positive and done by God. I often try to look past opinions and arguments and try to find what is the scientific truth behind this. And there's often compelling philosophical arguments that persuade me to think one way or the other. But scientific data always provides me with a deeper understanding of the situation or arguments, I believe. I do believe in good things such as karma and destiny because God put all of us on this earth with a unique vocation and purpose. Um, and it's what he knows is the right thing for all of us which is why when we do things that stray from our purpose or strain our relationship with God, we often see the effects of it in our everyday lives, whether directly or indirectly, um, because what we put out into the world always ends up coming back to us. So the most that you can do is be a person who's good to yourselves, to others, and to God. I hope that there is such thing as fate, and I would like to believe that everything works out in time but I know that this would not be the result of natural processes and instead uh, as a result of supernatural powers. I believe that humans find meaning in whichever cards they're dealt in life. And I do not believe in good or evil as blanket statements because I don't think there's anything that humans can create that's either 100% good or evil. But I do think that acts can be defined that way as good or evil, um, but when it comes to a uh, human person or anything else, I think that that's much harder to make that distinction. For me, true freedom comes when you simply don't have to worry about things, um, whether it's worrying about fitting in with other people or deciding what school you want to go to or even something as real world as putting food on the table. Um, when you're free, you'll know that you're free because you won't have these worries and you'll know that you've lived up to your true purpose that God set out for you and as a result, um, God will be there to protect you from these worries. Personally, I don't understand freedom completely. To me, in my life, I think that freedom is shown by the amount of choices I'm able to make about my own decisions and I do believe that um, living without things such as responsibility would not be true freedom but I do believe that freedom is found um, mostly in autonomy and be, being able to make choices um, for yourself. The concept of knowing the path versus walking the path is something that a lot of people encounter but it's often subconsciously. Um, there's a lot of situations where people know what the right thing to do is, but they often don't pick that road because it's also the unpopular thing to do. Um, and knowing the path is simply a surface level, knowing what to do but not putting it into use and kind of letting it go to waste. Whereas walking the path is putting those steps in place to make an impact on yourself or your community. I believe that through our consciousness, all humans have a sense of what is right and wrong. Many times there are strings attached to situations that can make decision making hard, but, and walking the path can be difficult when we as humans act selfishly or try to take shortcuts, but I believe that knowing the path of what is good is naturally given. Thank you.